Hello, welcome again to our daily Bible reading. Thank you so much for joining with me in this journey. And I trust that you are having your soul touched and filled with what I hope is a fresh understanding of God's Word as we look at it together. We're going to be reading the last two chapters of 1 Samuel and then continuing through the book of Psalms with Psalm 83. Let's pray. Father, we, we look to you now and we pray that by your Holy Spirit, you'll open our eyes, open our ears and open our hearts. Help us not just to see, to hear and to feel, but Lord, help us to put into action those things that will help us to become more like Christ. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Now when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, the Amalekites had made a raid against the Negev and against Ziklag. They had overcome Ziklag and burned it with fire and taken captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great. They killed no one, but carried them off and went their way. And when David and his men came to the city, they found it burned with fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him raised their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. David's two wives also had been taken captive, Ahinam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because all the people were bitter in soul, each for his own sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, Bring me the ephod. So Abiathar brought the ephod to David, and David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue after this band? Shall I overtake them? He answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake and shall surely rescue. So David set out and the six hundred men who were with him, and they came to the brook Besor, where those who were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and four hundred men. Two hundred stayed behind, who were too exhausted to cross the brook Besor. They found an Egyptian in the open country and brought him to David, and they gave him bread and he ate. They gave him water to drink, and they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit revived, for he had not eaten bread or drunk water for three days and three nights. And David said to him, To whom do you belong, and where are you from? He said, I am a man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite, and my master left me behind because I fell sick three days ago. We had made a raid against the Negeb of the Kerathites and against that which belongs to Judah and against the Negeb of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, Will you take me down to this band? And he said, Swear to me by God that you will not kill me or deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will take you down to this band. And when he had taken him down, behold, they were spread abroad all over the land, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. And David struck them down from twilight until evening of the next day, and not a man of them escaped except 400 young men who mounted camels and fled. David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken, and David rescued his two wives. Nothing was missing, whether small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything that had been taken. David brought back all. David also captured all the flocks and herds, and the people drove the livestock before them and said, This is David's spoil. Then David came to the two hundred men who had been too exhausted to follow David and all who had been left at the brook Besor. And they went out to meet David and to meet the people who were with him. And when David came near to the people, he greeted them. Then all the wicked and worthless fellows among the men who had gone with David said, Because they did not go with us, we will not give them any of the spoil that we have recovered, except that each man may lead away his wife and children and depart. But David said, You shall not do so, my brothers, with what the Lord has given us. He has preserved us and given into our hand the band that came against us. Who would listen to you in this matter? For as his share is who goes down into the battle, so shall his share be who stays by the baggage. They shall share alike. 
and he made it a statute and a rule for Israel from that day forward to this day. When David came to Ziklag, he sent part of the spoil to his friends, the elders of Judah, saying, Here is a present for you from the spoil of the enemies of the Lord. It was for those in Bethel, in Ramoth, of the Negeb, in Jatur, in Aurora, in Sifmoth, in Eshtemoa, in Rachel, in the cities of the Jeremilites, in the cities of the Kenites, in Hormah, in Bor-Ashan, in Atthak, in Hebron, for all the places where David and his men had roamed. And it's interesting that some of those places were the places that David had told uh, King Achish of Gath, the Philistine king, that he'd actually raided those places. And here we find him actually doing exactly the opposite, being generous to them. So that's, that's interesting. All right, when David calls for the ephod, well, what's the deal there? Well, the deal there is that there may well have been the, the pouch there where the Urim and Thummim were kept. And the Urim and Thummim were, were two stones that would indicate, as they came out of the pouch, they would indicate yes or no. That's why you find David asking yes, no questions of the Lord. And so when he says, shall I pursue? Yes. That's why he called for the ephod. And so that's, that's worth considering as well. Um, the Amalekites. The Amalekites will forever be a hindrance to the redemptive plan of God. And even David wasn't able to fully vanquish them. And it says 400 of the young Amalekite men fled. And so the Amalekites would remain a threat to the redemptive plan of God right through past the exile uh, into Babylon and into Assyria. So... Uh, the, the King Saul had his moment and he let it go. So anyway, all right, let's come now into f the last chapter of 1 Samuel, chapter 31. Now the Philistines were fighting against Israel and the men of Israel fled before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines overtook Saul and his sons and the Philistines struck down Jonathan and Abinadab and Malchishua, the sons of Saul. The battle pressed hard against Saul and the archers found him, and he was badly wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armour-bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and mistreat me. His armour-bearer would not, for he feared greatly. Therefore Saul took his own sword and fell upon it. And when his armour-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell upon his sword and died with him. Thus Saul died, and his three sons, and his armour-bearer, and all his men, on the same day together. And when the men of Israel, who were on the other side of the valley, and those beyond the Jordan, saw that the men of Israel had fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned their cities and fled. And the Philistines came and lived in them. The next day, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. So they cut off his head and stripped off his armour, and sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistines to carry the good news to the house of their idols and to their people. They put his armour in the temple of Ashtaroth, and they fastened his body to the wall of Bethshan. But when the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and went all night and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Bethshan, and they came to Jabesh, and burned them there. And they took their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree in Jabesh and fasted seven days. And David would honour these men who did that, these people who were not Hebrews. And they did this in honour of Saul. And we see the sad end to uh, King Saul, the one who could have, the one who had potential to be a great leader especially because he started out so humbly, but then he became proud. And in his pride, he became threatened and insecure, wasted time, wasted resources, and forgot about protecting his people. That, that battle with the Philistines, that would have been completely unnecessary if Saul had been doing what kings should have done, protecting his borders and driving out those people who came into the land. Let's have a look now, Psalm 83. A song, a psalm of Asaph. O God, do not keep silence. 
Do not hold your peace or be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make an uproar. Those who hate you have raised their heads. They lay crafty plans against your people. They consult together against your treasured ones. They say, come, let us wipe them out as a nation. Let the name of Israel be remembered no more. For they conspire with one accord. Against you they make a covenant. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gebel and Ammon and Amalek, Philistia and the inhabitants of Tyre. Ashur also has joined them. They are the strong arm of the children of Lot, Selah. Do to them as you did to Midian, as to Sisera and Jabin at the river Kishon, who were destroyed at Endor, who became dung for the ground. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zeb, all their princes like Zeba and Zalmanah, who said, Let us take possession for ourselves of the pastures of God. Oh my God, make them like whirling dust, like chaff before the wind, as fire consumes the forest, as the flame sets the mountains ablaze. So may you pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with your hurricane. Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek your name, O Lord. Let them be put to shame and dismayed forever. Let them perish in disgrace, that they may know that you alone, whose name is the Lord, are the most high over all the earth. And you will hopefully now recognize some of the nations, some, some of the city nations that Asaph mentions. We, we've, we've seen now as we've gone through Joshua and as we've seen some of the, the victories that David had, that we see that these are the, the people that were defeated and Asaph says, do it again, do it again. And I guess if we weren't familiar with what we've already read through Deuteronomy and Joshua, some of those things would be, what on earth is he referring to? But we have, we've, we've got it now, so we get it. So we see Asaph, who's been taken away to Babylon, and he's saying, God, we've been mistreated again by these foreign nations. You can defeat them just as you've done before. And that's worth remembering, I think, generally. Whenever you hit a low point, you can always remember that in the past, God has got you through. And that might be the thought for today for you as well. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for those who've joined with me today in reading your word and considering it and pondering it and now joining me in prayer. And I pray for those who might be facing challenges that are causing them to maybe despair. And I pray that today you would remind them of how you've got them through in the past and that because of that, you'll get them through again as they walk with you. So I pray today that your people would do just that, that we would have great confidence to walk with you today, trusting you just this day. Let's get through this day. So I pray in Jesus' name for that. Amen. Thank you so much again for joining with me in this Bible reading. If you could give it a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe. And if you haven't seen uh, the audio section at SoundCloud, you'll notice in the description there, I've got a link to that now. So some people have asked, uh, what else is there? Well, this is what else there is. Also, each Sunday, we are live streaming, so it's live from Lagana Christian Church, where I'm the pastor. And if you're enjoying some of these Bible readings, you might enjoy preaching as well. And you can watch that live on YouTube or Facebook at Lagana CC. Anyway, God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow for our next daily Bible.